Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. You do that every time. G'day, fans, and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Can you believe it? It's actually our 20th episode. How good is that? We've been on for 20 weeks, effectively. That's insane, isn't it, when you think yeah. about it? So uh, we've got people joining us already. We've got Greg joining us. It was absolutely fantastic. So we started this in April, and we're now almost into And Actually, no, we are in September now. And, of course, we're still chugging along, going, cutting through the whole cur COVID curfew and all the rest of it. So if you're stuck at home with nothing to do, sitting here watching us, then that just goes to show how sad lives are. So uh, we uh, have a very, very big show for you tonight, but I can't get anywhere without by introducing my lads. So lads, how are we tonight? I'm good. Very good. Yeah, good. Very, very cool. All right, so we're going to move on to our next segment, the year. What's the year? So MPS, I'm going to pass over to you. So what are we doing today, old son? We are doing 1958, and a lot happened in 1958, which actually was quite surprising. Um, in certain areas, a lot of things happened. In other areas, not so much, but we'll go through them. Uh, we'll start with Sputnik. Uh, falls to Earth from its orbit and burns up. Uh, for some of the people out there that, that would know this, uh, Gottfried Kirk Christensen patents uh, the iconic Lego brick. Um, so Lego was pretty much created from in 1958. The first successful American satellite, Explorer 1, is launched into orbit. The word aerospace is coined from the words aeroplane and spacecraft, uh, taking into consideration the Earth's atmosphere and outer space is to be one or a single realm. Um, Ruth Carol Taylor is the first African-American woman hired as a flight attendant. Um, sadly, that didn't go so well for her, and she was um, not a flight attendant six months later. Um, uh, comedy of errors, how's this? Uh, in the US, a B-47 bomber accidentally drops an atom bomb on Mars Bluff in South Carolina. Um, without the, the warhead, its conventional explosives destroy a house and injure several people. Imagine if it had the warhead, it would have just made a big... Earth shattering kaboom, but yes. someone mucked up and forgot to flick the switch. Just think, there could have been a couple down the road doing the funky chicken in the bedroom. It's like, hey, honey, did the earth move for you too? It's like, you're freaking out. Or he could have been just called a bomb. Um, yep. The Soviet Union launches launches Sputnik 3. Uh, the F 104 Starfighter, a jet plane, sets a world record speed of 2,259 kilometers an hour. Uh, President Dwight D. Eisenhower becomes the first American elected official to be broadcast on color television. Something that we all loved here. Pizza Hut is founded in uh, Wichita, Kansas. The plastic hula hoop is first marketed in the US. The first parking meters are installed in Britain. Uh, the US Congress formally creates the National Order... National Aeronautics and Space Administration, otherwise known as NASA. Jeez, uh, I, I struggle with, with foreign names. Vladimir Nabokov's uh, controversial novel Lolita is published in the US. China's first television broadcast starts at Beijing Television, uh, television Station, um, the pre pre uh, predecessor of Chinese, of China, Central Television. Um, two rockets designed by German engineer Ernst Mauer, the first German post-war rockets, reached the upper atmosphere. NASA starts operation and replaces NACA, or N-A-C-A, in the US. And do you, any of you guys, Jeffrey, you might know this. What, is, what does the N-A-C-A stand for? Sounds like they're knackered. Um, but yeah. No, I have no idea. Uh, National Air... Um, something or other association Both. the national advisory committee for aeronautics missed it by that much missed, yeah just that much uh, an, e an evening with fred astaire the first television show recorded on color videotape is broadcast 
on NBC. Uh, the first video game, Tennis for Two, invented by William Higginbotham, is introduced at the Brooklyn National uh, Laboratory Visitors Day exhibit in the US. Uh, the US launches SCORE, the world's first communication satellite. Uh, and then a, a day later, a message from US President Dwight D. Eisenhower is broadcast from a SCORE satellite. One for our friend Dave, because we know he loves this. The Jim Henson Company is founded in the US. And what goes on sale for the very first time? Instant noodles. <laughs> there you go. And college students right. rejoice. Indeed. Yes. So that's what happened uh, or what occurred in 1958. Jeffro? Yep. So uh, what we have in uh, the UK was uh, a gentleman by the name of Bertrand Russell launched the first ever campaign for nuclear disarmament. So uh, very much ahead of his time. I mean, he wasn't waiting for the swinging 60s. So, uh, and it was also that same year that there was actually a big protest march against uh, uh, nuclear um, energy and bombs and such. So uh, we also saw this was a year that the um, M1 motorway uh, actually began in the, uh, the UK. So it's basically runs from uh, London to Leeds. So that's basically half of um, uh, in England right there. So uh, we saw something called the Life Peerages Act uh, that uh, was actually uh, enacted in Parliament. And this actually allowed women to sit in the House of Lords for the first time. So what that means is that if you didn't inherit your title, um, then if you had that title, you could actually be uh, as it as a woman allowed to actually enter Parliament, so very much a, um, a progressive step for uh, for women. We also saw uh, the, the Queen actually give Prince Charles his customary title, Prince of Wales. So that actually happened in 1958. Uh, it was also the year that the first Carry On movie uh, began, and uh, we saw literally a dozen more sort of uh, carry on movies after that. So the first one was called Carry On Sergeant. And I know there's a few people out there that probably would have known that. Uh, Donald Campbell set the uh, the world speed water record. And uh, that was an amazing 400 kilometers an hour on water, just absolutely boggling to, uh, to think a human was traveling that fast on water. Uh, it was the year that um, we saw the first ever, and I say literally ever, computer exhibition. So that was held at Earl's Court. So you don't even tend to think in that uh, time frame that there really was any computers, but there obviously were enough to sort of create this uh, exhibition. Uh, Film-wise, very much a um, uh, hammer horror sort of uh, uh, led uh, year. We had things like Dracula. Uh, the Revenge of Frankenstein, and on the opposite side, we had the Titanic story, A Night to Remember, and the science fiction uh, movie, The Trollenberg Terror. Uh, we also, on television, saw uh, Quatermass in the Pit for the first time, uh, the um, uh, the medieval, no, she's not medieval, but uh, uh, the story Ivanhoe, uh, the classic H.G. Uh, Wells uh, adaption, The Invisible Man, uh, the Adventures of William Tell, and um, one not to uh, forget, although some people like to, the Jerry Anderson, not quite so classic, Torchy the Battery Boy. So <laughs> that was the year 1958, what you're Speaking watching. Of, um, funny how you can mix things. Uh, carry on, Sergeant, had the first Doctor. So how good is that? So That um, is yeah. absolutely true. Yes. Very cool. All right, so you're right, 1958 was a huge amount of uh, movies being made, uh, especially in the US. There was actually so many that I can't list them all, but there's actually a few that I'll bring up uh, just as a, a highlight. So uh, as uh, Derek mentioned, uh, The Blob uh, came out in uh, in 58. And, of course, the interesting thing about The Blob, but it featured Stephen McQueen, not Steve McQueen, because he wasn't known as Steve then. It was like his first film ever, I think, if I recall, or one of his first, and he was known as Stephen. And, of course, years later became a superstar. But who knew at the time? that um, uh, that would actually occur. So that was Stephen McQueen. And every year, and I don't know if they still run this, they have uh, a, uh, an event in America called Blobfest. And one of the key things that they do is have the annual running from the Colonial Theatre as part of Blobfest. So if you remember in the movie, oh. 
when the blob comes through, they all run out of the cinema, like scream their head off. Well, the cinema's still there, the colonial theatre, and they have a bit of a recreation of people running out, screaming and carrying on and all the rest, but which I think is quite funny. And, of course, the trailer for the blob appears on the drive-in screens uh, for Greece, which was actually kind of groovy. So there you go. Uh, next thought of that, we had uh, The Fly, uh, the first of what was to be, I think, a trilogy of films, if I recall. Um, a lot of people sort of laugh at the fly a little bit, but it's actually a very, very tragic story about a dude who's actually got infected with a fly head and a fly arm. Uh, and it's actually a very, very sad story in a lot of ways because he can't get himself reverted back. Uh, but, of course, a lot of people remember the last scene where you had the fly body and his head superimposed going, help me, help me. And a lot of people remember that. Mm. So it's actually uh, not the best way you want to remember this, the film. But unfortunately, that's the way it goes. And, of course, it was remade again in the 80s. Now, there's a few of some fantastic uh, titles I have. Like this one, It, The Terror from Beyond Space. So what yeah. is It? Well, that is entirely for you to figure out. IT, information technology, who knows? So uh, there you go. Um, another classic that came out in 58 was Queen of Outer Space featuring the fam world-famous Jar Jar Gabor. So, yeah, she actually appeared in a science fiction movie. And, of course, the key thing is the dudes all wore the exact same costumes from Forbidden Planet. So, uh, so if you ever see uh, a shot uh, from the film and you go, when was Jar Jar Gabor ever in bloody um, Forbidden Planet? She wasn't. It was actually Queen of Outer Space. So uh, there you go. You can check that one out. One of my personal favourites that came out the year, Fiend Without a Face, Flying Brains, right? But they're invisible, okay? You can't see them. You can hear them, but you can't see them until they sort of do some techno bloody thing. And the brains, they fly around and they're like sucking the blood out of people. It's, oh, it's gross. Absolutely awesome. And when you shoot them, and, they, and you got to give them credit for 58, right? When you shoot these brains, they don't just fall over. These got bloody shit pissing out of it and everything. Is <laughs> like, it's really gruesome. I like, love it. Well worth checking out. And they went nuts on that. So the brains are there with the spinal column. And <laughs> gross. you got to check it for that. Uh, one of the <laughs> sequels, everybody loves the sequel. So in this year, War of the Colossal Beast, what a name that is, the sequel to The Amazing Colossal Man. Now, this is what you call fast filmmaking, right? Now, these days, sequels can take a couple of years, you know, three, four years, even sometimes decades to come out, right? Imagine this scenario. The Amazing Colossal Man is released in October 1957. By the time of June in 1958, so it's less than like eight months later, the sequel's already been made which is War of the Colossal Beast, right? And, of course, they couldn't use the same actor from the previous movie, and so they what they did, they heavily disfigured his face. So I think they shot him in the gun or something, and he had all this, like, makeup on because they couldn't show the original guy, even though they had flashbacks to the original movie. So it's just like you'd have two different actors playing the same character. So clearly that wasn't going to work. So, uh, uh, yes, they uh, they uh, ended up disfiguring the, the main guy so they could get around this problem. As you can imagine, the film was pretty ordinary. So uh, there you go. But how's that for... Uh, um, yes. And if you look at Leonard Moulton, who's well known for doing his film reviews, he just said, forget it. So that was his uh, way of looking at it. Now, in terms of grouse titles, right, awesome titles. So we had It, um, The Terror from Beyond Space, The Brain Eaters. How grouse is that for a name of a title? Now, maybe they should be watching Fiend Without a Face because that in involves flying brains. The Brain Eaters, dudes who eat brains. How good is that? Another movie that came out that year, The Crawling Eye. Imagine that, an eye just sort of like, wandering around just doing its thing oh i just love that name um he had the terror from the year 5000 mate imagine that the year 5000 not even star trek has gone that far in the future yet so uh i reckon that's an awesome awesome title um how to make a monster now we're not talking about american politics here so i'm just going to go right past that uh and one film that did come out and i got a, I, it's not necessarily sci-fi but it's a bit out there um with this title you got to admit, this is something you just have to watch, right? And I remember watching this movie just from the title, The Wild Women of Wongo. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dudes in one island, chicks on another. It's excitement plus, Wild Women of Wongo. And that movie is utter shit. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> there we go. And uh, I've got to say, a Wongo movie. Yes, what are you doing? I'm making a Wongo movie. That's 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 what you need to do. So, uh there you go. All right. So uh, back to MBU, MPS, I guess. So if you want yeah. to wrap this up quick. All right. A couple of other films of note in that year. Uh, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, and the Academy Award for Best uh, best Film that year is Bridge on the River Kwai. Television shows, there were a stack of them around, but only a few that we would remember. Things like Mr. Ed, premiered in 1958, Felix the Cat, Mm. And another one, Pixie, Dixie, and Mr. Jinx. Mm. Two misses. Got to get those misses to pieces. Exactly right. Uh, and a lot of people were born that year, just like every other year, but 
a lot of uh, Hollywood celebrities that we now know. Uh, Gary Oldman, Holly Hunter, uh, which both, uh, oh, Holly Hunter will be in part of our discussion next. Uh, Peter Capaldi, Drew Carey, Michelle Pfeiffer, Prince, Bruce Campbell, Kevin Bacon, Tim Burton, Michael Jackson, Steve Gutenberg, Joan Jett, Kevin Sorbo, Tim Robbins, Viggo Mortensen, and Jamie Lee Curtis of a note. So uh, that was it for the birthdays. Very cool. Now, here's a very funny comment from uh, Michelle. Wongo for the remake list. I tell you what, no. Let's just leave the classic alone, untouched. So uh, how good is that? There are certain films that you just don't want remade. And I'll tell you, if you need to run out and buy or find a copy of Wild Women and Wongo, I don't recommend it. But, uh, yes, once seen, it can't be unseen. So there you go. Actually, um, if you want to enjoy something, Mystery Science Theatre has done a, oh. um, a run on that one. So if you can't stand the original, enjoy the uh, the, the send-up of uh, Mystery Science Theatre. Very good. And ironically, we ended up with 22 people watching tonight, even for a very Ooh. short period of time. So it's absolutely fantastic. And speaking of Kelvin timelines, we are going to be talking about Star Trek movies next week. So uh, there you go, because I've got a bone to pick. Uh, not, a, not a bone of contention or so much, but certainly something worth bringing up. So there you go. Anyway, we're going to buzz off. Have a great uh, week. We'll see you next week. And make sure in the interim that you all <gasps> stay nerdy. Okay. Stay nerdy. Sure.